G'day star stuffers. Have you ever noticed how the Hubble palette, SHO, where you map sulfur to red, hydrogen to green, and oxygen to blue, kind of looks like crap? You see all these images online and they look like these glorious rainbow colored images, but yours looks like Kermit the Frog just threw up his breakfast. And getting a really nice false color image has a few little extra steps. You get something that looks more like a gay rainbow. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff. This video is sponsored by Raid Shadow High Point Scientific. High Point Scientific have been really, really supportive of this channel despite my weirdness. They are a fantastic online store or if you need help with your astronomy or getting off the ground or get taking your astronomy to the next level, they will actually personally help you with that. Thank you High Point Scientific and be sure to check them out for your next astronomy purchase. Well, it's uh, sort of clear. I think my neighbors are having some sort of psycho party. I'm gonna try lots of things. It's just a night for fiddling, I guess. to get an image last night which is great it's not the best image in the world but what I wanted to talk about is the Hubble palette SHO uh, when we combine these you'll notice that if you combine them you just get this green thing the hydrogen is mapped to green and it is a massively green image but if you look and you see what other people are doing you'll see some of them are green some of them are brown and have that brown blue bias but some of them have this rainbow color about them and I really like that look. This is what I mean. So here's a Google image search for SHO color palette and you'll see what I mean straight away. Some of these are clearly green, right? Green, 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 green. And that's really what we expect when we map hydrogen to green. Hydrogen is the most abundant element. But some of them have this red blue bias, which is also really nice. Very rarely, there's these shimmery rainbow ones. Uh, yeah, and it's actually quite a nice effect, but it's not what you would expect from the Hubble palette. So what is going on here? I almost forgot, happy Mardi Gras, Sydney. Uh, remember, the universe actually doesn't care what kind of genitals you have. So let's try it out. Here's my S2 layer, and here's my hydrogen layer, obviously the strongest layer there, and there's my oxygen layer. Now, we would expect mapping oxygen to blue that we get this nice blue central area the dominant color is going to be green which is the hydrogen layer and we have the sulfur layer which is actually pretty subtle but having these little fine details here will give us some nice color trim but let's combine them so all i'm going to do is uh, convert this image to rgb this is my sulfur layer and that gives us these red green blue layers here so i'm just going to paste in the HA layer to green and paste in the O3 layer to blue. And what do we get? It's green, super green dominant and purple stars, which is really unnatural looking, right? Um, so I'm gonna save this off as an RGB file. Okay, now I'm in PixInsight because PixInsight has the SCNR tool. Now the SCNR tool will remove the green bias. Um, and the trick here is to invert the image because we want to get rid of these purple stars, right? So we'll invert the image here. That turns our stars green. And then we dump SCNR onto here and then we invert it back. Now we've still got this really green image, but the purple stars are gone. We've got these sort of orangey blue stars, which looks way more natural. So that's a good start. Now what I could do at this point is run SCNR again. Or well, what I find happens is the image looks cool. We've got this big orange area and we've still got the blue of the oxygen, but it just looks a bit bicolor to me. It looks a bit flat. It certainly doesn't have that amazing rainbow sheen that you see in some people's images. So I had a little fiddle last night and I came up with a process which does give you that rainbow sheen. So let me show you what I've done. So first of all, I want you to save this image. So we should end up with 
two of them. And what we're gonna do is layer both of these in Photoshop so that they play nice. Okay, if you've watched this channel long enough, you know what I'm about to do here. This is my HA layer. So this is the layer that I'm gonna use for luminance. It's right at the bottom of the layer stack. On top of that, I'm gonna add that bicolor layer. I'm gonna change the blending mode to color. Basically like putting cellophane over that HA image. I also add hue and saturation and I add a bunch of levels to like give it that pop. <laughs> I'm really loving that image. So remember that green image where it was really HA dominant? I'm gonna add that back in, color blended. I'm gonna add that back in, but I'm gonna drag the opacity down to about 60%. What we end up here is with two color layers. I'll turn that back on. Now we're starting to see more of that rainbow effect. We've got the blue, but we've got these red outer fringes, but we also have some hints of green in the middle as well. Now you're getting an image that is a little bit more like that rainbow effect that you see with SHO. It's still SHO data, it's still narrow band, it's false color, but it's not completely fake. Now if you really wanna be a jerk, you can just change that blended layer to a rainbow and make your <laughs> image look like complete crap. Okay, look, if I'd taken an image like this a few years ago, I would have been so blown away. Uh, but us as astronomers, we're all very self-critical. This is all super sharp here, but you'll notice um, down the bottom, I experience some tilt and there are some areas here which are really soft and some of these stars are quite bloated and there's even some rings if you look super close. You'll also notice the image is very cropped in uh, compared to the original because of these layering effects on the borders and the weird gradients that came because the moon was at half phase, which is always annoying. Because there was a meridian flip uh, as, I, as I was doing the data, half of the data was on one side of the meridian and the other half of the data was on the other side. So I ended up with these two flares, which are the cables running off the front of the telescope with the camera. Those two flares, one of them's red and one of them's blue. So obviously one of them's in the oxygen layer and one of them's in the uh, sulfur layer. So I ended up with this weird diffraction spike. It sort of looks pretty cool, very subtle for a schmidt cassegrain uh, diffraction spike, but it does look pretty cool. Check it out, I was on TV on Channel 9. Um, it's gonna be on this week, uh, Saturday midday for all of Australia. National TV, which is pretty weird. It really makes you feel completely insignificant. If you want to see any more of Dylan's work, head to his website and YouTube Okay, I think we're done here. Are we done here? Oh, check out the sponsor, High Point Scientific. Thanks for supporting this video and thank you for watching it. My name is Dylan O'Donnell. You've been watching Star Stuff. Remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die.